Hello, and welcome to Fable 42, where we build community on friendship, gaming, and chaos. Oh, music, that's fun. Uh, but you know what, I'll get it in seconds. Uh, a few quick notes. Uh, I am Colin, the Dungeon Master, Family Fantasy RPG. I make D&D for kids, and I write homebrew content for Wildspire Miniatures. Uh, with me is a fun group of voice actors and role players uh, here to entertain you thoroughly. Um, one thing, guys. Actually, I'll get to it when we get into it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's go ahead and do our sponsors, and I'll mention it in a bit while I get music. All right. Well, first up, we have Griffin Co. GriffinCo.com. You should totally go there. They are a long-time sponsor of this channel. Special thanks to them. Uh, they're an amazing family company. They craft, They have 3D printed everything. Terrain, just miniatures. You, you name it, they probably 3D print it. So, um, go check them out. Uh, you can use the code uh, FABLED42 at checkout for 22% off your purchase. Um, I believe they're still the mid giveaway. Yes, or we... Yes. There's a back of that. Okay. No, it so, is yes. still the mid giveaway. Still the mid giveaway. So hope. Yeah, so hopefully Colin enabled Xmas Point Critical. I did. To... I did it. Good, good on you. <laughs> so, but totally do that. Enter and uh, yeah, giving away free stuff. So. Woo! Free stuff is always great, but so is really awesome, intricate, creative things to help you make new characters or to help you create a gamescape for people who are playing characters. And if you are interested in either, check out our friends at Underground Oracle. That's undergroundoracle.com. And see some new ideas for... <laughs> and she's huh? gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you are... Sorry. Go ahead. I think I she thought you might... were gonna crack a joke. So it might... oh, I was just gonna read it. Do for do it. Oh, for her. Got it. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, do it. Um, so check out our friends at Underground Oracle. They create fifth edition resources for both sides of the screen, and you can find them at undergroundoracle.com or at Drive Through RPG. Don't forget our next uh, wonderful sponsor for the evening, Nine Realms Gaming. They hand make all of their products from natural woods to create quality and affordable gaming accessories for all your TTRPG needs, like game, uh, game, dice towers, dice vaults, DM screens, um, really, really beautiful rolling trays and customized uh, goodies. Um, you can also get 10% off your next purchase from Nine Realms Gaming at their website, ninerealmsgaming.com using our special co code, Fabled42. Right. And special thanks to our sponsor, Critical Dice. They have an as amazing assortment of dice and even have a very popular dice subscription service for your inner goblin. Um, stick around for your chance to win the Critical Dice giveaway that will be called at the end of our session. Um, please note that our giveaways are for US and Canada only, excluding, excluding Quebec because of giveaway laws. And please help support our channel by clicking the link below for 20% off all non-subscription items. Uh, and finally, well, maybe not finally, don't forget to start your week here on Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Pacific with Crypt Creatures, our horror campaign DM'd by MZ Dusty. Um, and as we say goodbye for now to Duke City Chronicles, uh, our Monster of the Week campaign that uh, played on Fridays, uh, we are in the makings uh, for a new sci-fi adventure. Uh, the search for uh, Zod, um, DM'd by MZ Dusty as well. But stay tuned on socials for more information about that campaign's release. Uh, we pride ourselves on bringing a wide range of quality storytelling to those eager to join us for our adventure. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm noticing that <laughs> we are very little behind on Twitch. Like really, like Vesta, it's currently your your ad, I think, on Twitch. Um, so that's okay, but it seems to be going at least um, smoothly. So what I'm supposed to tell you guys about is YouTube. So YouTube obviously is this website that does all this cool stuff. Mostly plays our shows. I mean, that's really the main feature 
of YouTube is Fable 42 shows, all the campaigns are there. I mean, all of them. You can watch any and all of them there on YouTube. Guys, anyone in here, can you guess how many YouTube subscriptions we have? Oh, damn. Bacchus, uh, is, Bacchus is popping off. 5,301. I mean, that'd be really nice. That's a great guess, but you, it's, it's a little lower. <laughs> we have 926 or 28 close That's to there. Nice. Uh, okay, YouTube subscribers. So, we are going to make a push for 1,000. Um, we are going to do a massive, massive, I, I think it's massive. At least one set of Wildspire miniatures will be in there for sure. But a large give giveaway for hitting 1,000 YouTube subscribers. So, yes. keep an ear out, especially on our Discord, uh, to what that'll all, that'll all be, but we're, we're gathering prizes, guys. It's going to be a prize pack or multiple prizes. We don't know yet, but it's going to be a big one, so stick around. Uh, and also here on the Twitch, uh, if you are a sub here on the Twitch, which five new people, thanks to Bacchus, are, you can support either me or the party by giving luck and inspiration uh, to help us along our way. Okay. Well, we're going to run a quick video for you, video, video for you guys, and then we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Salon, a world caught just outside the blessed fields of Elysium. Home to the migrated Gardinals, celestial animal kin searching for adventure. The Sun Guard are the protectors of this realm, standing against the forces of evil that seek to disrupt a lasting peace. It has been over 100 years since Bell's dark invasion faltered at Boiler Bay. In the north, Helor's warming glow bestows prosperity to the nations of light. But in the south, a new story unfolds. And we are back. Okay, uh, where we left off last time, by the way, uh, Calliope, played by Cherie, is on the road. Uh, lucky for her, this is, uh, as you may notice by the title name, and if you remember from our last show, which I could just go into the recap, is that uh, the group, after being together for quite some time in the Enchanted Forest, uh, my Raylan Forest, uh, getting some objective objectives taken care of there, now return to town. Now, after this interest, hey, I did write this down actually. I can't remember if I took notes on this. Um, interesting meeting with General Slot. So, once you return to Gorsefire, you immediately recognize some major shifts in the population's allegiances and opinions of your group. You met with General Slot, who awkwardly kind of just gives you a slap on the wrist and asks for you to focus on the primary task, finding evidence against the boss for the raid on Inrin's Keep. Now, after some small talk and a hot bath, our heroes have taken to the streets on their own, looking for answers both personal and for the cause of, how did you say it, Lupin? Uh, save for the saving Gorspire Keep? Yeah. Saviors of Gorspire Keep? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, we uh, I, I, the players have given me uh, a list of things that they would like to accomplish in this little bit of free time. Uh, so this is gonna be one of those days uh, where we're gonna just kind of knock some of these out as we go. So first, Let's start with Vesta. But I'll be back. Okay, Calliope will be back. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> she's she has to listen. She wants to listen because she's sure some. There's a lot of s's happening. Spicy stuff. Sure to sizzle. Surely. I blend and nosy. 
So I want to know. Mm -hmm. So Vesta, you were part of the conversations a little bit in the common room uh, before the group split up. What is it you would like to do? It's um, about, remember, just for everyone, sorry. Uh, it's about like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, Vesta would like to return to her room and sit down on the bed and get comfortable and then pull out from underneath her outer layers a pendant, um, a black amulet, and concentrate on it and place one phone call, please. Yep. You don't, I want you to make an arcana check. Great. Oh God. Um, we're gonna have to roll digital dice. Uh, that's not handy beyond. Sorry, I pulled it up. I was prepared, I swear. Arcana. <laughs> Four. Oh boy, okay. Um, yeah, you don't really know how it works. You just know, you know, like the general idea of what it's supposed to do. So go ahead and reach out. Okay, I reach out. You feel as if the magic is... Like, you feel like a buzz, especially around your mouth. And uh, it's as if the magic is waiting for you. Hello? Uh, after a couple of seconds, you hear a response. Well, this doesn't sound like Raishal, so... Yes, dear, what... What can I do for you? And you feel the magic dissipate. Uh, but... Um, now, you feel this buzzing in your ear as her voice comes in kind of in a similar um, similar fashion, but now the ma you feel the magic buzz in your ear and you hear, but to be succinct, this magic is limited. You told me to check in when I had information. And I think I have information. I'm all ears. And you, f you feel like it go away and come back. Uh, there is a um, mild uh, revolutionary movement happening in in town, uh, and there is apparently a cure for the disease that is happening. And also, the cave has skin. You you, like, before you finish that thought, you can tell that the magic uh, kind of dissipated for a second. So you might not have gotten that whole that whole thing in. Uh, there's a pause. It's an unusually long pause. And then finally you feel the buzz again as the voice says. It sounds like there's probably more that I'm gonna wanna know what we can do by this means. Let me look at one note because I have the notes up. I'll send Raltran to meet with you in the morning. Fill him in. He'll speak for me. I'm sorry. Connection not very good. You said you sent who? Uh, Raltran, you remember... Uh, you don't need to say this. I'm just yeah, kidding yeah, yeah. you. <laughs> um, you remember he was the one that, that uh, guy, uh, not, shepherded you to Folly P. Yes, yes. I was just giving you shit. <laughs> Okay, um, 
You gave Raishal pendants as well? Uh, yes. It's all part of the ceremony of it all. Well, then why not just talk to him? He had pauldron. Well... <laughs> are you jealous? No, I'm annoyed that you are having two different people do the same job. Seems like a waste of resources. You wait... 10 seconds... 30 seconds. Doesn't seem to be a response after that. How are we supposed to keep talk with Rothran secret if this is supposed to be secret? And he's coming here to talk to me. That seems very suspicious. You don't know if that went anywhere. Well... Best of thought that thought loud. Okay. And that's all Vista wants to do is talk to that person. All right. What? So you just kind of lay back and... No, after that, she'll go buy some spell components. We don't need to... Right. So you hit that. the you hit the mark. At some, she'll, so she'll be out and about in case anybody else is out and about. You to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Uh, sounds good. So let's switch it up. Envy. You had said that you first wanted to visit Newtonall. Yes. Um, I think I probably would have found Swinda to see what directions were to his clinic. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've been there before. Mm -mm, you haven't. Uh, she does point you in the direction. Um, she says, Oh, uh, the Behead's Healing Hut, that um, is his little place. Be, uh, be weary, he's not... He's not there that often, but... Good luck. Uh, thank you, Swinda. I will be in the best of luck. Mm -hmm. And uh, where she kind of tells you to go is in the um, Stonefall Quarter. So in the, the quarter where the lost and some of the decrepit buildings and as you get to it it's it's really not far from the keep it's kind of like you walked across the bridge and then just a little bit kind of took that first road that takes you along the back uh it's not a wall it's just the edge of the coastline between stonefall quarter and the keep um and you see a building a stone building same construction fully intact um Perhaps maybe no windows uh, once used for storage, but there is now a sing swinging hand-painted sign that hangs beside a door and a uh, torch spot. Uh, directly on the door is a plaque that reads, Please knock. I welcome all when I am here. The statement is repeated in several other languages below. Uh, I will walk up to it and uh, give it a nice knock. Uh, you hear from inside, uh, one moment, please. And you hear kind of like a shuffling. Um, and then after a second, you hear, please enter. Uh, I'm going to try and open the door and walk in. It is unlocked. And uh, once inside this single room, about 15 foot by 20, your eyes are immediately drawn to stacked shelves of planted herbs and succulents. Below on a workbench, you see tools used for grinding and drying herbs, as well as some small flasks in varying volume and color. Larger flasks contain clear solvents for making potions, very meticulously labeled and organized. There's magical light, uh, uncomfortably bright, emanating from the center of the ceiling, uh, perhaps trying to get some UV light to the plants and herbs. Um, you, of course, see Newtonall. He has kind of this one uh, chair spot that, that uh, has a table that's all the way against a wall uh, with stuff on it acting as a desk, uh, but there's not much here. Uh, give me one second to change the music and then we can get.
Sorry, guys. I, I, I picked music out for each one of these, so I want to do it, but I know it takes me a second to switch over. I was just drinking regular water and I randomly tasted the flavor of orange. Is that like a sign for something like when you smell burnt toast but nothing's happening? I mean, I hope you're not having a stroke. Oh no. I mean, I Because that's what good. that is, right? Okay. Did I think well, it's when you burnt toast, I'm just wondering what does it mean when it's oranges? I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. You drive. I, I know where you're driving. I mean, it could just be citrus around. Oh yeah, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Atmospheric orange, which could be the name of a band. <laughs> All righty. So he welcomes you in. He has his mask on. He's got the black clothes inside. Um. He says, oh, "I see you have returned." Did you happen to find the plot? Ah, uh, yes, yes, we did. Um, but I don't have it here. Uh, it's with another party member. Okay. Uh, what? This is in regards to something else. I see. Well, have a seat. And like, as soon as you sit down, you realize like, that's the room, that's the shop. You sit down, you've explored the whole shop now. <laughs> Uh, Swinda, our um, our helper back at the keep, she said that you aren't here that often, and the sign out says says, "Well, we're welcome if you're here, but are you often away or not at here?" Well, yes, these ingredients that I've been searching for, especially lately, draw me away from Gorspire, often taking me places that I cannot travel quickly. But when I'd come back, there are plenty of people that know my services and uh, are waiting to see me. Word usually gets around that I'm in town, and sometimes there can be a line. That makes sense. Uh, you don't have an assistant or anyone. Uh, I have never really thought of needing that. Uh, most of the time, the money that I get for my services goes towards more services. Um, perhaps I can get you to help me with something. Uh, there's a mark somewhere on my skin that uh, I have recently come to find has a fey energy presence. Something about it is fey. Uh, he he takes a step forward and starts to reach, but he hesitates, realizing, yeah, give me an insight check. Chat, don't forget, if you are a subscriber, you can give luck and inspo to players or myself. There's going to be some rolls tonight. A lot of role-playing role, role playing roles. RPRs. Uh, a 12? It's really, again, it's really hard to, to tell expressions with this mask on, but as he as he like pulls back, he immediately follows up with, "Do you mind if I inspect to take a look?" There was meets by Marcus. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, and then he he continues on, kind of. Um, you can tell by his touch. He touches you on the shoulder as he's walking around, and he moves his hand just gently along your shoulder up to you, the back of your neck, and he starts to pull down. Like aside, your down your cloak and your armor and everything, uh, making room. Um, you feel him starting to like part the fur, the thick fur. And like it doesn't take long, he kind of parts the fur once, and pauses for a good second. And then you hear him chant 
uh, a, a, a spell in divine language. And if you were looking up at him, you'd see those red glasses he has now kind of emanate this red, dull energy. Oh, my. Uh, the magic itself is not that strong or intense or even dangerous by any means, but does this hurt? And you feel him reach to the skin. And as his finger kind of traces, just from like your experience with your, your detect magic, like what you've seen and what you've experienced, what this looks like, you can feel he's very much tracing this runic sigil outline, but it's bumpy. And there is actually a little tinge of pain. Uh, it's not com completely uncomfortable. Are, are you able to see it? Uh, with the magical enhancement, yeah, definitely, but I... And you see him uh, kind of take his goggles and switch it to the side, and the, the, it goes away, and he kind of comes back. He does a little back-and-forth action here. Um, without the components of the detect magic, it is much more difficult. But this, what is there, is from what I call an arcane bird. When something like an arcane rune is placed on skin, usually once or twice, does not leave any lasting imperfections or damage. But when the same rune or scribe is placed on the skin over and over and over again, it tends to leave a little bit of a mark, burn if you will, discoloration on the skin. It's not very comfortable. And would I remember anyone having put like a mark on me? Not to your recollection, no. Interesting. Um. Uh. I guess that is good information to know. Now, you way. said you think this is of a fey inspiration, yes? Uh, yes, just when I was detecting the magic, I also tried to uh, detect good and evil. Yes. And for a second, I, I felt fey energy. My knowledge of the Fae is much more focused on the plant life and magic of nature in the land. I can't offer you much insight into what this could be. Oh, there it goes French. To what this could be. But the Fae is a land of natural threats. There are those that... There are those that are hunters that mark their targets. I don't know of any hunters that would mark a target for so long to leave such interesting remnants of their tracking, but... Perhaps someone is hunting. Uh, and taking that in, envy will kind of pause. Um, and I'll be right back if you want to use this as a dramatic pause because someone's at the door. <laughs> oh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause. So just as a reminder, everyone should always check their skin to make sure that they don't have melanoma or weird fey. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, 
brought um, to you by monthly routine checks. Month, yeah, checks <laughs> yearly. Yearly? I don't know. What's well depends on as, as a woman, we check things monthly, so we could check our skin now and for any face stamps that we might be hunted by yeah. unknown male- malevolent uh, entities. <laughs> This is exhausting. <laughs> We're on one. We're on one. No, I meant the uh, the, the constant checking up. So, oh. somebody hunting envy. Mm. Yeah. This has been great because I'm using all of my downtime watching everybody else and listening and eating to <laughs> write my notes out into my Google Drive document. Nice. Oh. Okay. All right. Back to lurking. Uh. There was one other thing that when we were out on the road, um, there was like a uh, creature being kind of in the shadows. And one night when we were camping, it approached me. But this, this, this being I have seen before, except I believe this is the first time that it's gotten so close. I, it seems that perhaps this is the hunter. You said it's been on you your, for how long? Um, from much that I can remember. I mean, I haven't always been able to uh, detect magic as I can now, but I have seen that uh, being before when I was much younger. Tell me, do you believe yourself strong? I mean, I am not uh, very physically inclined. Strong-willed, perhaps. Yes. Envy, I... I would say you have reason to be worried. This... figure that is apparently hunting. If he has been tracking you and following you for so long. He's probably aware of Billy. So for him to be threatening you in such a way, well, he must be very confident in his abilities as well. Interesting. I hadn't considered it that way. I will uh, be on guard a bit. That is advised. And from what you know of these hunters, or by your best intention, should I avoid this creature? Uh, I don't know much about fey hunters, just that this was the first thing that really came to my mind. I would say this though, I can't imagine that any of the stories of hunters, fey or else otherwise, and your personal situation seeming maybe one of the more heinous, they don't, I, I wouldn't imagine they usually end well for that person being pursued.
I I see. Um, well, uh, most of our party has kind of. I don't know if you heard any of the ruckus a bit back, but uh, we're off to our own devices, and. I know that us getting those components to you is of importance. I just do not know when uh, they will be arriving, but they should be arriving in due time. Very well. Uh, the process is going to be, it's not the quickest process. I must process these ingredients to a much more safer form before, uh, before I can mix them into my concoction. But the sooner I get started, the sooner we can try it out. Easy enough. Uh, I, I will not keep you waiting anymore with my dull shanties of uh, fey hunters. Um, Although, I, if time permits, I would like to stand in on how you are preparing. Is preparing the best word? Y uh, yes, um, uh, it will be up to you. Uh, the first part of uh, uh, preparing these particular ingredients, there will be some steps that I will do right away, but then... I must distill and burn off certain components. That was French. Uh, <laughs> um, before I can do the fun part. So, if you wish to be there for that part, come with the components, and I will get on that part right away. Easy enough. Um, thank you, Nuthanol. I uh, look forward to uh, uh, more pleasant meetings. I, me as well. I, you mentioned, uh, I've heard that, I, I haven't heard much, but the sounds coming from outside this little hut are different than they were a couple days ago. So be careful, but I am excited to try this, to try my concoction, to see if it will have some kind of, at least longer relief from this horrible affliction. Yes, uh, and as uh, Envy starts to get up, uh, what uh, days passed what makes you say were things different here? I just mean the the noise is, is outside. There's there's more variety. I can hear cheering. I can hear chanting. I can hear people being angry. I hear fighting. It's different uh now. I see. Yes, I, I, I will keep that in mind. Um, uh, have a have a good day, Nutno. Good luck, Healer. I look forward to seeing you and your friends soon. Yes. Um, and Envy will carefully get up and start to head out of the. Uh, healing shack to head to his next location, but he'll he'll close the door like gently behind him. Perfect. All right, we are gonna jump to Lupin. Hey, it's me. Hey, it's you. Where are you going first? I know the answer, but I want to hear you. You do know the that. answer. I'm gonna go see my mama. Two o'clock in the afternoon, you make your way over the bridge. 
as I kind of go try to clean myself up since I probably don't look the greatest as having been pretty close to death in the last 24 hours. So, you know, I thought about that for Calliope, but I hadn't thought about that for the rest of you guys. I knew I needed to ask if Calliope actually has healed that much or if she's still sitting at like teens hit points. I guess I could well, look. Hit I mean, hit point wise, I'm okay, but still like hit points versus like, no, you got kicked. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you're, you, like, you've you got dried you're... blood. Yeah, y'all got burns. You, yeah, you've got stuff, but what do you want to do? spellcasters are looking tired. I mean, I'd say you'd <laughs> have time to, to get either cleaned up in the bathroom with a quick bath or whatever you whatever you want to do. I mean, I wouldn't spend that much time. It's okay. just trying to cover up some of the damage. Sure. Yeah, you can. Um... The, you come up to your house um, and you walk inside. Uh, immediately, you notice a few differences. But go ahead and give me a perception check. Sure. 16. 16. Um, the house... Y'all didn't have a lot of, like, family items. It's been stuff that y'all have carried from place to place to place. Maybe some items from home. They're packed up. You notice right by the door there is a large duffel bag and a backpack. Um, and then over on the table there's another bag that seems to be partially packed. You... See your mother. Uh, you seem to have caught her. Uh, she was quilting, finishing up a quilt. Uh, and she was she walked into the kitchen for a moment, but kind of as you're standing there looking around, she catches, like she notices you. And immediately you see just paused um, emotion. The tears start flowing immediately. And she seems to be kind of in shock for a second. Um, I'll go over to her and try to put my armor around her. Like she like kind of like she's sitting quilting, I guess. She wa uh, It looks like there was a spot on the couch where the quilt has been laid aside, and she, no, but she's standing, like kind of right in the doorway, past it into the main, like the main room. I'll try to give her a hug and see what happens. <laughs> Pretty much when you get within like five, like close proximity to her, she kind of yelps and puts out a hand, and she's like, "Stop! Oh, stop!" No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I have something to say first. And she says, Lou, what, we're at the point now where you leave a note. We can't even, you can't even talk to me. And not only that, you leave me a note that says, by knowing you, I'm in danger by, by, how, how, how would you have me take that? And all it tells me is how distant we, we're just so distant now. I, I, sh I should have realized it a long time ago, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you, you're old enough to be on your own. You obviously want to make your own decision. Make your own mistakes. I sometimes, over the past two couple days, I've, all of this has been circling in my head, and I just I feel like 
she breathes, and the tears, a second wave kind of start flowing, and she says, you've never really needed me, not late. Yeah, I, I know you, I was there when shit turned south. But other than that, So, so I, I think, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go. The only reason I'm here is because of you. You know that, right? I know. And it's, I think it's probably a good thing that you kind of go your own path now as I have to go mine. Um, last 24 hours did not go the way I thought it would go. So I want to kind of see you before, I guess, we walk our own journeys. Know that whatever happens, I love you, and that won't ever change. But this is something I need to do. Um, I I can't run from all the problems that come up that I can't turn a blind eye to anymore. And I failed in Boiler Bay. And that had consequences. I hope not to fail here. But it's something I have to do. As you finish that sentence, you just, you didn't really see it coming, but she does kind of lunge at you and embraces you in a hug. And you hear her crying. And she says... God, you're just as stubborn as your father. You know I get some of that from you too, right? <laughs> I mean, this whole spirit of rebellion thing didn't just come... Well, it took a lot of courage to take yourself out of that situation. I know that. You didn't have to take me with you, but you did, I. Right? And you won't. Words cannot express how much I appreciate you did that for me. You say, you know, you came here from like, just with me, and I'm glad you did. But... If if you believe that this is the right path. then it's the best time for me to go. Because I, so. I can I can forgive you for Boiler Bay. I can forgive you for here, for 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 the note, for for being distant, for all of that. I can once it's over, once you've walked this path, I can forgive you all of that, but I if I stay and you're wrong, I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to. To. I don't know what'll happen. I'm just tired of running. If this fight goes bad, and something happens to me, then I will know that I gave my life to do something that was. Hopefully good. <laughs> well, not quite. <sighs> Maybe better than your father. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still going to take me a while to be okay with this, but Kaisen is has pulled a favor. There's a, a ship. 
boat that should be here a week's time or so. Safe passage across the sea. Are you going uh, back? I don't know if I can go home yet. But, you know, before we had to leave Boiler Bay, I had made some acquaintances there. I'd, perhaps, if it, perhaps I can do that again. Do you know if good old dad will, you know, try to find you? <laughs> you know, I've stopped trying to guess what he's going to do. You got away from him once. I just hate to see you get caught again. Oh. Your father, the one I knew, the look I saw on his face. No. He doesn't want to find me or you. He wants to forget us. I'd like to say I could forget him, but there's probably some welts on me that will never go away. So, well, there's still time. Perhaps if maybe we can go back together. Why would you want to go back? Well, he's an abusive asshole. I mean, nothing uh, changes that. Maybe not, but it, if we could go back successful, if we could go back strong, better. I don't need to go back to him. That's not what I mean. I want to go back and show him that he was wrong. Maybe. Whatever happens, know that I love you. This is just... I want to be free. And I know running isn't freedom. And these new friends, you, you think they'll be there? If shit goes south? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I have faith. That wanes a lot right now. But I think they have good intent. I mean, Rotel's pay with good intentions, right? But, you know, we'll see I... what happens, I guess. Lou, I can tell you that through all the things, through all the mistakes and a few bad decisions, there's one thing I've always thought you did right. Perhaps meant I did right. You, for the most part, stayed true to yourself. You've accepted the wrong decisions. You've if you learn from them, if, if this is, if this is the next step, if this is, I support you. I just, I just can't watch it. I just can't be here, but I will think about honest. you all the time. Please, once you can find a way, send word, let me know that you made it past this I mean to be honest knowing that in a week's time you'll be you know not here again I don't know what has happened in the last couple days I hope we will find that out but I have a feeling Forest Spire is going through some changes right now and some of it might all, not all be peaceful so, knowing you are hopefully safe in Boiler Bay would be at least an ease off my mind. 
Yeah. Um, I must say the word that's been going around this area lately, there's a danger to it, but it is one of hope. Feels good to have that circulating around, but seems like there's probably more chances for bad than good. The hope in itself can cause damage. I mean, great change takes great sacrifice, and so I feel times will get a little bit darker before they get better. Well, I'm sure. Uh, Go ahead. Played it out a couple times in my head, trying to make this how this would go. Just, you know, a little different when you're actually in the moment. You sometimes get lost up there, don't you? I don't like to be surprised. So. I know. You, if you think too long, you might abandon doing your true nature. Here, and she goes and she runs into the kitchen. And of course, your mom has a little cloth folded up with some warm baked goods, breads, and she hands it to you and says, <laughs> it's funny, I, this is not how I thought it would go down either. I was ready to slap you. She kind of looks down when she says that. I mean, I was half expecting it. If you still want to do it, you can. She looks yeah, up and- you, you look way softer than dad did. She looks up at you and like you see that the tears are still there, but she's smiling. And she embraces you in a hug once more. And we'll go ahead and pull it back for now as you and your mom kind of just talk, spend a little bit of time together before you hit the streets again. And Before we get into a new story, let's go ahead and take a break, and then we will come back with the next person in line. Uh, Exclamation critical gets you entered into the giveaway that we will run as soon as we come back from break. Uh, Ten minutes is what we need to uh, Mm. go to the bathroom. Mm. (laughs) Mm. I want to like reach through and give Lupin a hug, but I'm not there. I'm not there. That was awesome. That uh, was great. Ten minutes, and we will be we'll be back, guys. Don't go anywhere. And we're back. Last time she didn't know, so I want to make sure. Yeah. She <laughs> really, you right. many just really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you, girl. I got you. <laughs> Life affirming revelations need to be saved for. Off street. <laughs> I mean, uh, hey, it's all being real, but still, as long as that person knows that they're sharing right. with the entire world. That's Sharon that is yeah. a Karen. Has yeah. anyone ever used that yep. before? It's kind of funny. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, hey. If you want to, you could still enter our uh, giveaway at exclamation critic. No, critical. Critical. <laughs> yes, exclamation That's... critical. Uh, I'm wondering though, I, man, there's such a lag. I'm really sad about my internet tonight. Uh, it seems to be running so, but no one's hearing me say, hey, enter exclamation critical because we're not there yet. There's that whole, you know, time is a soup thing mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tig. I love. You Woo! get the Griffin Co. Hey, Tig. Griffin Co. Giveaway is But yours. we are gonna, oh, hey, Tig. 
Tig, what's up? Winner, winner, chicken. Chicken dinner. Dinner. Okay. Let's jump back into this little uh, smorgasbord of stories. Board. Uh, Shay. What are you doing? Yes. Okay, so Shay had left Gorsefire Keep and she is like just kind of like exiting like the keeps area, mm -hmm. with, like crossing the bridge. And she's gonna do a hard left towards Trader's Quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and she'd like to like, before she like gets in the thick of it, um, go between, like find an alley or the back of a building that looks private. Okay. And like, um, you know, wants to like make scan the area, mm -hmm. make sure like nobody's paying attention to her or watching her or anything like that. This part of the the traders' quarter is mostly residential. You haven't gotten into more of the business area. Okay. Yeah. So you can. I mean, it's definitely. It's at this time of day. Not many people walking around, so you easily find a, a spot. Perfect. Perfect. Um. She's gonna lean up against a wall. Like, take a big, deep breath. A lot of, like, reluctance on her face if somebody were to, like, be right there next to her. And she's going to cast Sending um, to Calder. Okay. And do you want me to do the 25, or will you help me count them? I'll, the I'll can count, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so she casts Sending... Sorry for the delay. Things are crazy here in Polstrom. Might have started a revolution. Um, almost died. Still haven't located target. Two more. Need more time. Need more. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Shoot. She need more. Mm, okay. <laughs> and just to point it out, uh, Polstrom is the <laughs> I wasn't capital. Watching. I should have watched you. <laughs> Polstrom is the capital city. You're in Gorskar Keep. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, because I had poster on my mind because uh -huh. of backstory stuff. Can uh -huh. we just retcon that, please? No, I think it's a good little uh, no. uh miscue. Oh, no. But <laughs> that was Chelsea's mistake, not Shay's mistake. Shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> you hear a thank you, please. Next time, with information on the target. But thank you. And that's it. Okay, and because mm, they are responding by sending, so that I can't respond to that one, right? No, right, correct. And I cannot send another one. <laughs> I am tapped out, <laughs> so I will not be able to fix. <laughs> okay, I'll. Uh... Let out a big, deep, like, exhale of energy and, you know, being tense and relax. Um, and then I want to ask you a question before I do what I do next. Um, I've been in Gorspire for, like, a <laughs> week now. So I have an idea of what, like, I know it's a big city, but what, what would be, like, some of the very well-known and, like, common, like, types of races... Like, I know there's Leonol, Lupinol, like, are there a lot of humans or a lot of, oh, yeah. like, there like, are a lot of a humans. mixed bag? It's a mixed bag, it is, but there's human and uh, Gith. There is a large contingent of Gith townspeople here For as sure. well. For sure, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Gith, Gith and human are probably two of the majority. There's okay, dwarves cool. and gnomes and halflings and okay. you've seen a few drow. Um, half orc, okay. for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I'm gonna actually timestamp that because I don't have time to like <laughs> check on that later. Okay. Um, she will cast Disguise Self, and her skin will turn a pale, like, a kind of tan, uh, human color, and her big, long, green ears will shrink down to rounded human ears. Her hair will, like, turn into, like, a blonde, tight, up tail like ponytail like a high ponytail um cloak that's like not real fancy but not you know kind of like um an average cloak over a plain kind of co solid colored dress are you and trying to what what kind of wealth are you trying to portray here i'm trying like middle class middle pure middle cool. yeah yeah, okay. not trying to gain attention in any one direction. Um, mm -hmm. If anything, would probably look a little bit more on the poor side, like maybe like lower middle class. Okay. Um, uh, bigger nose. Let's go give her a bigger nose and some dark brown eyes and uh, some cherry lips. And she's going to now come out of behind that building and start making her way into like the... Mm-hmm. The, the busier area of Trader's Quarters, and she's she wants to go find the crowds and these, like, hopefully thinking protesters, uh, if that's the word we want to use, that she passed by on her way up to the keep. Okay. I need to ask Chelsea a question here. Yeah. Because as the DM, I know a little bit about this disguise... Is it the one you've used before, or is this is this a new one for a new locale? This is a brand new disguise she is coming up with on the fly. That's why because I need to know. she is trying to just look like a plain Jane in this town. Got you. Okay. Yeah. You making your way to the trader's quarter, like the more populated and busy market area. Um, you've been here before, you, you've seen some of the shops you've seen before, like Felicia's Face Place and Meets by Marcus. Um, the people there are busy doing mercantile things. As far as like the crowd that was there just a few hours before, that seems to have broken up. As okay. far as, like, lingering protests, mm -hmm. not so much. But you do notice one location a little bit busier than the rest at this time, especially because you've been in this area around midday before, too. This place seems to be hopping a little bit. Okay. And there's a sign above it, and the name is Coco's Cocktails. <laughs> I love it. It's always with the rhyming. I love it. I want to go to Coco's Cocktails. Dude, <laughs> I want one right now. Yeah. Is it next door to Meets Mar Marcus's Meats? It's, because I mean, it's Mar walking distance. It's not Mar right next door. Mar Marcus and Coco need to get on a collab. That's collab. probably fair. I don't yeah. know why I said collab. Coco's and Marcus. Drink at the same time right yep. next door. Yep. I mean, well, y'all could revolutionize the service industry of Gorse Fire Keep if you wanted. Was that a uh, no pun intended? Revolutionize, you said? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, well, on that note, I will be able to tell the rest of my party how good those cocktails are because Shay's going to uh, go in mm -hmm. and, you know, take a look around, kind of gauge, like, what's this kind of crowd, um, go up to the bar, and she's going to get herself a drink. Okay. Give me a perception check. Gladly! <laughs> First roll of the night. A dice ball from Nine Realms Gaming. It's just very I rolled. Magnets. I rolled tonight. Remember my four? Yeah, it's not the first roll tonight. Uh, Indy rolled tonight. No, my first. I yeah, said my first, first roll. roll. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought I was about you, Chelsea. No, no, I knew. Oh, that's terrible. That's just lovely and terrible. That is the total perception. Uh huh. Hey, chat. Lock and info <laughs> to the players if you're subscribed. Uh, that's a total of seven. 
Seven. All right. Um, as you enter, uh, like I said, it is. It's up. Oh, Tig is giving luck an inspo, if, and I can let you. I hadn't started the response yet, so if you'd like to use either one of those, he hasn't you, actually specified. He hasn't, so, but I would assume it's the okay. timing. We'll Tig's keep always going. Tig's <laughs> on spot with the timing. He says, "Got you." It's it's for you. It's for okay. You. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, I'll add a d6 roll to that then. That's a, a one for, yeah, an eight. for an eight. I guess I'm saving my complete reroll for other things okay. later. Thank you, Tig. Um, an eight. You, you, you like it's a lot to take in. There's two. There's a lot going on here. One, this is like you get on the inside, and the inside is way different than this like you know storefront matching color scheme outside. It is bright colors and vibrant like slashes Ooh. behind like this glass display of liquor bottles and wine bottles. And at the bar, there is a tall elven woman, light skin, ears long going back, uh, brown hair kind of in a poof afro, um, uh, and wearing this like sparkly dress. She's, she's, she's tall and kind of light, but she has stringy muscles enough um, it seems like she's in pretty good uh, fitness, and she's kind of uh, leaned back on the bar, laughing with customers and engaging with people around. As you make your way up, you you realize that it looks like a lot of these people, uh, uh, like you recognize a dress here and like an outfit here that like you saw these people. These were the people, some of them that were lining streets. Seems they have come into Coco's for a drink after the hubbub of that noontime event. Uh, you get up to the bar and- Shay's and... feeling very underdressed in this moment, but that's okay. She's like feeling the vibe in here though. The, like, but like mental the... note, this place is cool. Yeah, the, the people though, they're <laughs> dressed in like, they're not dressed like fancy clubbing, like uh, the bartender is like in that sparkly, but, okay. but they're dressed like day, like, you know, it's fancy day wear. You know, All right. Coats with multiple layers and flaps. It's a nicer and, spot. Yeah. It's okay, not, it's, yeah, it's definitely the, a like, nicer local spot. dive. Right, it's not a dive. Okay. Um, and the bartender sees you kind of coming up, and she says, "Okay, what's uh, what can I do for you?" Um, is there a menu like above behind her so I can just like order something that's like posted? You see, like a mixture of liquors. You some that you recognize: clear liquors, vodka type, gin type, darker liquors like your tequilas and. You know, there's um, definitely a mixture. And then wine. It seems to be more of a selection of wines as well. Well, I want to, like, seem like this isn't my absolute first time here. So I don't, I would like to order it. Like, if there's anything I can see, the first name of a cocktail, like, I'll, t I'll have one of those. Just give me a history check. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. I love it. We're doing history checks for cocktails. This is my fucking mm -hmm. kind of game. You I love it. Give me time to think of a cocktail name too. This is a fifteen. Uh, fifteen. So way back in Polstrom, what? you were around lots of bars. You heard people ordering lots of exotic drinks. A lot of them from distant places. A lot of times they would have to explain to the bartender what it was, and they'd always, you know, feel so pompous describing these fancy Got drinks. But Got you it. also learn some more of the local ones. Beyond, like, obviously you have an array of Polstrom drinks that you could choose from. Okay. But learning from around the area, there was one that you um, you had in Polstrom, but then had like a variation in Torch Pool because it's named uh, okay. a Torch Pool uh, Flame Torch. Flame torch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's basically like distilled liquor, like an Everclear, like vodka in a shot glass, lit <laughs> on fire, dropped into an ale. Okay. Okay. I love it. I want one. <laughs> it's like a sake bomb, but with torch pole right. booze. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, hi there. Um, I'll take a one uh, flame torch, please. Ooh. I don't usually start making those until, you know, lights go down, but hey, you know, what's well, a little fun? I mean, I just have been gone for a couple of days and I'm finally like able to relax and I I don't know what's been going on. There's been like, I heard there's a bunch of like 
protests and stuff, and I, I just figure I'm trying to catch up, so might as well order a flame por uh, flame torch, you know. Uh, so she starts making the drinks. She says, mm, "You've been gone for a few days. So does that mean you've been here for before that?" Well, yeah, I'm staying with my aunt and uncle. They live um, a couple of blocks down. Um, so I've been here for a little while, but yeah, what's what's been going on? Well. Yes, you're right. There's been a big hubbub around here, and it's been all mostly about uh, these new strangers in town. They uh, they work for the big man over in the keep, but uh, they've been stirring up a lot of a lot of talk around here. Oh yeah, I like some gossip. Give me a persuasion check. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. Okay, that was great. Um, that is a total of 29. <laughs> um, so you flash her this, like, just innocent kind of homely smile. Uh, devious in a sense when you mentioned, like, you like gossip. Playful, and, right? Yeah, playful. Like that playful mm -hmm. deviousness. And uh, she says she kind of uh, spots an empty seat pretty far away from the entrance. Like, she she kind of looks over, but she sees an empty seat kind of back along the bar towards the wall, and she says, Okay. Go grab that seat. Let me uh, take care of a few of these orders real quick, get ahead of it, and then uh, we'll come meet with you again. Okay, and then as um, as she says that, I'll take the shot, and I'll, yep. like, dunk it into mm -hmm. the beer, and I'll go, ready for all the tea for you to spill, and, like, sip it, and walk over and go <laughs> take a seat. <laughs> awesome. Um, you, the, the drink, do you, how do you drink it? Cause this is just me being, having fun. I know. Cause like, I was thinking that's one of those that you chug. <laughs> you have to chug a flaming Dr. Pepper. <laughs> but I'm like, I gotta sip it. Right. So like, I think I would have dunked it and like, um, kind of like if anybody's ever drinking soju in like, in cast, it's in Korean beer, you like dunk it, but you sip it. Like you don't okay. just chug yeah. it. Um, so she did do that just to be cool so the first <laughs> sip the you take then, yes. the first sip you take there is a sweetness but then there's like a a, a, a hot like a spiciness to it like almost like a tabasco Ooh. shot Ooh. kind of floating uh. on top of it but it's 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 sweet and spicy and as you sip it the spice actually goes away that the, the hotness gives way to where the sweet kind of is what's lingering there and it's mm. very much like island rum or flavor what's it like um cap spiced rum you know like more of that kind of island sweetness uh, on the back end of it, but that that the heat goes away pretty quickly. So you make it over to your seat. You hear people talking, and I mean, it is you see that she is quickly gathering drinks and stuff. You have made you don't know how long, but probably a couple minutes before she comes back. Is there anything else you're doing, or are you just kind of waiting? And um. Well, first, tell me how much I need to take out of my inventory for that. You don't, I don't know, know how yet. much it costs. Yeah, you don't oh, know I yet. 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 Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, do I recognize anybody in the built inside? Now that you've changed locations, go ahead and give me another perception check. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Fair. That's terrible again. That is a two. That's a five. That's a six. It's a six. It's a six. Mm -hmm. Um. There are quite a few people there. Um, you're scanning, you're, fi you're looking for recognition. You're scanning these faces, and there's uh, definitely a con uh, several groupings of Githyanki females. Okay. And okay. one of them looks like they may have been at the dinner as one of the guests, maybe, of a, of a high-ranking officer or something at the dinner. Okay. But you, just, you don't know which one. And, like... As you kind of make that recognition, you look over another group and you're like, oh, that one also looks like she could have, like, you know, it's like, okay, you're not I'd sure, like, but. Okay, well then, as I make my way to the the spot, um, I'm going to pretend to, like, trip, but, like, almost spill my drink, but, like, not, and then, like, reach down, like, my, my heel of my boot got caught on the um, hem of my dress and skirt. And kind of stay down there for a minute and try and adjust it. Um, okay. And maybe try and pick up any of the conversation of this group of female guests. Um, yeah. 
I'm like trying to like like I'm there, but like mm. I'm I'm just some woman with, walking by and adjusting her skirt. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like just giving another perception check is very mm. generous because you've rolled two perception checks. Is there a great? They've been great rolls at five and six. Nine but but this is a new this is a different interaction. You're looking for something different. Mm. Go ahead and go ahead and give me a perception check again. Perception again? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm trying to listen. I know. Yeah. This is definitely more guided, more uh, uh, intended. Okay. Now that is what I'm talking about. That is a natural 19 plus four for 23. 23. Um. The as you go as you like they stop talking when you trip and kind of. Um, as you're down there for a second, one of them uh, says, huh, well, I guess some people can't handle their alcohol as well as others. And they they kind of giggle and they say like, oh, but that was a lot of fun making such a ruckus. And the other one says, oh, I, I know, I just don't know if it was really worth leaving the house. And then another one says, oh, what else were you going to be doing? It's good to be get out in the sun and, you know... We're barely in this part of town anyway. Um, you... I'm going to say mm. that that's kind of just what it is right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will, as I come back up, I will scan them. And I will, like, look over and I want to kind of, like, look at their faces before I walk on. Okay. With your, and I'll then I'm going to go find a seat. Yep. All right. You have that seat. Um, as you get over there, um, she, uh, the, the bartender comes over and says, all right, now, wait, what'd you say your name was again? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Maggie. And you are? And reach out. And she kind of gives you the Coco LaRue's the name. Oh, you're Coco. This is your place. Oh, this oh, place is yes, great. Yes, darling. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've been here for a couple years now, and uh, I definitely think it's one of the more fancier places on on the grounds. I mean, this place, a lot of the other places, they're great. They're awesome. I've checked them all out, but this place is like the best place in town. Oh, well, thank you, dear. Now, And this, this cocktail is delicious. It's so perfect with the vibe of the coastal city. I see what you did there. Good job. Oh, well, this drink's been around for a while, but uh, I think I do a good little, a good job of putting it together. Your own twist. Yeah. Now, now what, what exactly tea are you looking for? Well, I just, I, I, I arrived right when I feel like all of the crowd started to disperse and everybody was just so excited that I, I couldn't really get like a straight answer. Like I missed it. All right. So <laughs> I was saying that there's these new uh, people in town that work for Havish over at the keep. And oh. he said something about how they're supposed to be, you know, working for a better gorse fire and all that bullshit. He sends to talk about, about mm -hmm. making us a destination, you know, and mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be great for business. I'm not going to lie. Business today is, whew, but keeping me on my toes, that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, a couple days ago, these people put on a performance and apparently kind of pissed a few people off. Uh, yeah. and ever since then, people have just been alike. Wait, so a bunch of newcomers came and pissed a bunch of people off and there was protests in the street? There has to be more to it than that. <laughs> I, well, I don't know if I'd really call them protests. They seemed a little... I could barely hear them from my shop. Oh. Oh, I, I thought I saw some signs and some banners and people were chanting. I, I couldn't catch what they were chanting. Hmm. I've been here all day. But, oh. uh... This crowd came in pretty quickly. Perhaps they were saying at the same place. I, yeah, I could tell that something was going on, but I didn't think there was, didn't seem like anyone was in trouble or danger. Well, well, that's good. I mean, okay. So, oh, I thought there was a lot more to it. I thought there was some like really exciting news. I thought there was like 
protests and somebody whispered something about a revolution and you know usurping some power i don't know um but it was nothing you say it was nothing well you know people over there and she kind of points in the direction of the stonefall quarter okay they always talk of revolution and wanting to start something but nothing ever really gains foot well, why would they in the first place? I mean, this group of strangers or not. I mean, what what are they so unhappy about? Because, you know, I'm, I'm not from the area. So I, I've only been here a few weeks and it seems pretty nice. Oh, you know, any town you go to, there's going to be people that feel that they have been given the raw end of the deal, not willing to work during the day to make money to set up some kind of situation that they can work off of. I mean... True, I was given money before coming here. I had plenty I needed to set up and get things going, but I work hard. Yes, yeah, so to start a successful business with these great cocktails. Yeah. Well, I brought, you know, to be fair, I brought some, some knowledge. I, I worked at a bar like this back home, but uh, now everything, I, I don't know what they're complaining about, but... They're always going to be looking for hand downs and free meals and all sorts of things. Oh, so you're not from around here either, originally? Where are you from? Oh, I, I traveled far to get here, looking for adventure and something out of the ordinary, something exotic, something spicy. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Where I come from, it's a little bit of a quieter life. Up on the Stone Root uh, Islands. Up where north. was it? Stone Root Islands, up north. Stone Root Islands. Up north. Oh, um, I've heard of it. Never been, but um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to try and chase adventure. I know what you mean. Well, this cocktail is just lovely. What do I owe you for it? You haven't charged me anything yet. That one right there, we'll say a two silver for that one. Okay. Great. Um, and with that, um, Maggie is going to go ahead and chug the rest of her flame torch cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, pass two silver to Coco. And... Um, It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll definitely be back for another. Maybe bring some friends. Um, oh, De you better. <laughs> of course. This is not my last visit here. Thank you so much. And um, I'll see you around. And then she'll wink and start heading for the door. All righty, darling. And she kind of turns. And as, you, as soon as you kind of walk away from her, you see her yelling out. Uh, now, Estelle, you put that down. Let me make you a new drink. It's warm by now. Okay. Kind of. Hitting the crowd. All right. Is there a place you would like to go next? I don't know if I'm going to have you do it right this second, but where yeah, would... Yeah, um, I think I would actually start heading to Stonefall Quarter, but okay. if you want to totally check in with someone else, that's perfect. All right. Um, we can go to Envy. To your second on the list. Let me... Uh, bring up the music oh that's where i was yeah. do you want to tell everyone where you're headed while i bring this up uh envy after he left um i need to say the name so that it sticks heat's healing hut uh, would head towards um, the Night's Watch Tower in the... Mm, don't tell me... Uh, Watcher's Quarter. Mm -hmm. So, I guess if he was in... Was it the... The... Stonefall Quarter? Yes. Like the, okay, so he would have headed, I guess, south and then 
east from there. Yep. Uh, along position. the main road, or are you trying to like? Um. Mm. It's not very stealthy. I guess, but not like just in the middle of the streets, just, you know, side, not making eye contact. Sure. Don't want to get picked out of the crowd. Go ahead and if you're really trying to be a little sneaky, you might as well roll. You might as well roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. Might as well. Uh, Do it. Still. Do it. Okay. Which was that? Um... Huh, it ended up being that role, but with my modifier added to it. Uh, 17. 17, yeah. You uh, start walking on off the side of the road, but down the main thoroughfare. Um, there's plenty of, like, traffic uh, this part of the day. There's merchants kind of, some pulling in, maybe not arriving they wanted and setting up late, some, some leaving early and some relocating, but the, there's enough cart traffic that you feel like no one's getting a great, you know, you're not sticking out in the crowd. Um, there's not a crowd, like as you saw earlier, lining the streets or anything. Um, everything seems to be back to normal. Uh, you make it to the night tower, and sure enough, there's the um, kind of regular guard down there at the bottom of the tower, but they just kind of acknowledge you and allow you to pass up onto the ramp and up into... The night tower, which where on the bottom floor, uh, Buck Puck is um, alone at the moment. Um, and as soon as you come in, oh, where are my notes? Where are my notes? Uh, as he come, uh, as you as you come into the room, uh, he says, "Oh, I was wondering when one of you was going to stop by. How did?" Uh, did y'all, did y'all get it? Uh, yes, we, we did. But, uh, arriving back in town, we got sidetracked, I guess. How much did we miss? Uh, have they filled you in? Uh, good little bit, yeah. Um, although I wasn't here for some of it, um, Kind of, when I got back, I, oh, I can't take my life. Uh, when I got back, I separated ways from Tristy at the stables, turned in all those horses. And um, when I came back here, they kind of filled me in with everything going in on town. That uh, the word was out uh, about Fenric. Um, and it was suggested that. Um, that we go ahead and do the official ceremonial transfer of power type thing. Y yes, uh, General Slod informed us about that. Uh, this is a good thing, though. I mean, no more questioning your position. Yeah, yes, for, for sure. I, uh... It's just <laughs> so quick. <laughs> so real now yes I mean perhaps now you can understand why we all weren't in such a good mood when we arrived to uh, collect the horses and head to the forest but I think things are going to get more complicated before they get easier uh, at least from how things were expressed by the general. I think we need to find some good favor before uh, uh, Lord Havish returns. I remembered it before I had to search it. Good favor? What What kind of good favor would you need? Uh, he's going to need information, preferably of the kind that he uh, sent us to acquire. But then he like looks around. Is it just uh, I know you said he was alone, but is it like are there guards posted or anywhere? You know that the, 
the traditional layout, the guards that are more of the observ observing guards, they're on the above deck. So not at least except up there probably, but not not on this level. Okay. Uh, I think we need to determine if a certain group was responsible for what happened back at the, uh, the, the keep. I believe this is the first Buck Bucks heard this, right? Uh, well, he was there when Lord Havish yelled the orders to us because he didn't leave until gotcha, you're right, we yeah. made our way back to the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Wait a second. And he goes and he pulls out a journal and he said, I, I finally found something going through all these journals of Fenric's looking for some kind of leverage or some information and this seems kind of applicable right now um have you heard forgive me but uh Fendrick doesn't seem like the journal keeping type you'd be surprised he um perhaps because maybe his memory wasn't so good but he took notes he understood the value of information especially around here um this is going to take me a second. Okay. Um, the orcs, the Boulder Snug orcs, um, one of the original houses here. I didn't know the full story with it, but he took some notes. Um, the leader, Trick Boulder Snug, they. These orcs were left behind when most of the encampment was abandoned after the passing and presence of uh, Bell's invasion, the army coming up to Sunrise Yard. Um, but the ones that stayed behind were led by this trick boulder snug who was given by Havish the, the, the authority of, the, of a house. Uh, these orcs were brutish and tribal. Uh, they didn't easily adapt to shared authority they said he took notes as if tensions just kept continuing getting worse he feared confrontation he feared something um it was discovered at a meeting that trick and his tribe attempted to assassinate another house member of the boss yeah uh the council immediately voted unanimously and the orcs were rejected their house forgotten and trick executed by Havish on the spot. After that, That's... most of the orcs left town. Um, do you think they stayed together? You said they were tribal. Perhaps, I don't know. I haven't heard from them, their kind, or them, their group, in a long time. There's been no sign of them. Hmm. Well, I mean, similarly, it would seem that tables have turned. Uh, the boss is in charge of the loss or the misfits the misfits yeah um and uh dm to player lord havish is trying to get us to find evidence on blaming the misfits mm -hmm. okay I want to make sure I said that right. Um, were there any notes about why the houses were formed in the first place? Um, he kind of is flipping through. Um, you know, he actually goes and picks up a different journal. There's multiple journals. He goes to it seemingly an earlier journal and says, this is, this is as far back as they go right here. Apparently, 
Enron, the previous leader, uh, this was not his part of his plan. Uh, Fenric was here. Uh, his night watch were here, but held no authority. When I came through town, they did. So somewhere along the and, and he's kind of looking and kind of trying to piece things together and thinking. So somewhere, when Havish took power, he's the one that implemented this system. It seems. He said, right here, Lord Havish approached me. We talked of Gorspire and what we wanted out of the city. Fenric, he says in his notes that he, he was joking about any, about the Night Tower. It was, not a, it was not something here. But apparently, Lord Havish had some part to play in its construction. I mean, I just find it interesting for any leader to divide their power uh, amongst others, even if in a ease of process sort of regimen. The orcs now the misfits i feel that lord havish might have had them as houses just to appease the masses but may not necessarily want to have given them any true power within gorspire you're right i don't it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? I mean, unless... Unless... He doesn't really feel like he's given away any power. That could also be the case. Um... I mean... To say history will repeat itself, if we do find any evidence that would lend itself to the misfits being involved, I do not bode well for the boss, and I haven't even met them yet. Perhaps, perhaps you should. I, I don't enjoy, I never enjoyed meeting, but he is a leader of people. There are people that follow, that lead him. Sure. He has multiple agendas. So, you be the judge of their good, their bad, ha you know, what is the requirement of... But if they did attempt to assassinate, they did a plan attack on the Gith, then most likely, Havish would be, be able to have them kicked out to eliminate their house. I and he kind of, oh. you see him, his head scrunch up a little bit, and he looks at you, and he kind of points, and goes, wait a, those people that attacked, the, the ones that were definitely misfits, is, was their present not enough evidence? How much more evidence does he need? Well, from how the... particular misfits were after they died there seems like there could have been tampering of sorts um maybe they were doing it against their will regardless that information we would need to know before we could clearly say that it was the misfits that did what they did in in fair conscience what the fuck is going on here? I honestly don't know, and I'm not even from Corspire. 
Um, while it would behoove the boss to lend us information that would claim their innocence, with all the events that have happened these past few days, can we even trust the misfits at the moment? I mean, I'm finding it very difficult to trust anyone these uh, past few days, but... In the sense of the enemy of my enemy is my friend, perhaps, everything... Allegiances are valuable much like I value you and your group's legions and council. I'm sure the boss would see value in at least hearing y'all out. I guess that's fair. I mean, even if he lies to our face. But, uh, we might be able to determine based on what he tells us if he's lying or not. Actually? <laughs> Never mind. Um, I also took your advice, Buck Buck. I gave you advice. You give plenty of advice. I think. Uh, but... I went to uh, find out about that mark that I have. And uh, not exactly the best information, but it's more than what I had prior to you. So that is something to consider. Uh, I don't want you to worry, which is always the best way to start a sentence when you want someone to worry. Uh, but something may be hunting me presently, but they have been doing it for quite some time. So either they're really terrible at their job, but from what Nuthanol says, they're probably very skilled at it. But <laughs> I will just let you know if anyone seems out of place. Anything that scares you and your group is something to take note of. So thank you. Uh, it's hard to think, Pat, beyond the current stuff we have going on, but... I hope that I'll be able to help you with that should something come up. Something's and haunting you? I That's wouldn't say up, I'm dude. afraid, Buck Buck. I am more intrigued than afraid, but I, again, from what Nuthanol said, I probably shouldn't go seeking out this hunter. And yes, it is very, uh, unsettling to have something chasing you and not knowing what it is. I mean, it would be equally unsettling to have something chasing you, but at least if you could, like, apply what it was, you can make better decisions. You are unsettlingly casual about this. I How do you Perfectly fine. I, I feel like if it was me, I'd be losing my shit, but, uh... I gotta say that your casualness about all of this actually... probably keeps me from... going crazy, you know? Like, I don't know. Going crazy? Is there another side of Buck Buck I have not seen yet? Wait. 
Well, I mean, I just mean that it's different this time. Like, uh, everything I've faced has usually been alone lately, especially. I have enjoyed feeling like part of a group again. Fuck you. Uh, then he kind of like taps him on the arm. Oh, there's muscles there. Um, <laughs> You are quite hilarious, actually. I, you know, I, I, I would say that you aren't quite alone. I mean, Nightwatch included probably could back me up in saying so, but uh, you definitely have us and me here if you ever need it. <laughs> well, I wish y'all were there for the, the ceremony. I mean, already you know I'm not good with all that formality stuff, but uh, I don't know. I would have appreciated a blessing or something. You always have my blessing, Buck. Uh, he's going to, like, is your hand still there on his shoulder? Oh, no, definitely touched okay. the muscle and yeah, okay. retracted for both of our prosperity's sake. <laughs> He's going to grab your shoulder. There is no muscle there. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, of course. I." When he kind of, like, shies away and, and says, so what a... What's next? Are we just... What should... What do you... What should we be doing? What should we be looking for? Like, what... I've got well, resources. I can I can put some of my guys on, on... On... Searching for something, but I... I need... Do y'all have, have any have leads? Scouts? in the night watch i really don't know positions uh or titles or anything like that so he kind of like <laughs> kind of like puffs up a little bit he says you tell me what I... you need scouted <laughs> uh if there's anyone we can send you can send out to try and find someone that was part of uh, the the Boulder Snug uh, Orc group, just so we can question them, see if anything seems similar uh, as of recent events. Um, it just, I mean, to have a house turn against another house, and then years later have the same thing happen. Um, I mean, I don't think coincidences happen like that, but if there was a reason, by all means, but it seems like from the notes that Fenric took, there's something missing. So if we could question one of them, um, obviously not the leader, but- um, Are you suggesting that for years and years, for however long that there's been some expansive cover-up, or uh, how many people would, I mean, how you, Fenric would have, have to be involved, right? Uh, the I boss. Really can't speak for people who aren't present, but I, yes, a thousand percent, I think there's something that's happening here, and we just need to find out what's behind it all, and all the help that we can get would be more beneficial than us kind of guessing. All right. Well, uh, I will set my watch to search out and find information on the Boulder stuff clan. Just like a few. I mean, nothing too ostentatious. Uh, <laughs> do you have anything that you have to do before this uh, meeting in a few days? Just uh, practice my <laughs> practice my uh, straight face, my poker face, as they say. 
I was there and I'm now the leader of a house at this meeting. Havish is probably going to ask me to be a witness. Tell what I saw. Well, uh, as long as things don't get more complicated before too long, if you just need to go over some premeditated lines, I will definitely listen and offer my uh, unique form of criticism. <laughs> I just got a picture of Tommy, not Tommy Boy, but the the Adam Sandler movie where he's it's Billy Madison. Or, <laughs> that is correct. And he takes off his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> gets a person to learn. <laughs> um, all right. I, yeah. Uh, come back by when you've got time. I imagine you're going to be pretty busy, but I'll be here. All right. I mean... We definitely have been through a lot in the very short period of time that we've known each other, but uh, if there's ever a time that I am not fully engaged in something else, you have my undivided attention. <laughs> I'm now the leader of a house, so... Yes, I should be taking orders from you, Buck Buck. No, no, I mean, I don't know how much free time I'm gonna have anytime soon but oh yes 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 perhaps well I will try and find the others there's honestly stuff that we still have to do uh, plus we need to arrange a meeting with the boss which I am looking forward to you never know I mean if you've got stuff to trade coin rumors perhaps he's got some of your answers good to know also um, he really needs to learn how to keep track of his people better just They are a band of hooligans and misfits, just like their name suggests. Uh, keeping track of, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever tried to keep track with a crowd like that. I guess it could be rather difficult. Perhaps I'm just uh, false impressing. I, I should leave. While I am still making coherent sentences. Just remind me again how many hit points you like. Are you at full health or are you? Uh, I am decent because we healed after. So like I'm at 32 out of 43. So OK, yeah, over half. Um, he gives you a, a nod and says well hopefully I see you tomorrow right at some point what is tomorrow at, like relative wise you would have two days until the meeting it's just a week but he just oh yes yes I know how time works Tomorrow or sooner. Okay. Well, Thank you. And uh, I just realized that sooner would mean I would be coming back over here tonight. Uh, tomorrow would be uh, safer to gauge. Yeah, I'm, it'd give me more time to find information that we that I told you about. Yes, information. Yes. I was not thinking of anything else. Yes. I, You should probably rest. 
Insight check. What is that exactly? <laughs> like sleep, like like. When have you slept last, Buck Buck? Actually, I kind of slept pretty good last night. I, I compared to being out on a horse or tree branch the night before, it was pretty nice to be in my bed. Uh, mine's racing. I am leaving. <laughs> Oh, he mentions his bed. My race. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Tomorrow. Yes. Have uh, some ideas. I'm gonna throw random questions at you that Lord Havish may or may not ask. Good. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. Good talk. Okay. <laughs> And you're out. Yep, he leaves. Okay. Let me just look at my notes. Whew. What a day so far, guys. Whew. Um, I'm guessing Calliope isn't quite at her location. Is that, cor is that correct? Charit. I would say that Calliope needs like three minutes. Oh. Max. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Lupin, if he's there. Or... Hey, it's me. <laughs> or I could see where Shay wants to go next, but let's... No? Okay. okay. Go for it. I mean, yeah, Same. you it said... It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. John's Lupin. All right. So where is Lupin going next? Um, I mean, before I leave, I guess my mom's house well i guess this house that she is in is it a rented thing or is it something that like like what's the deal with it? it it's one of the abandoned structures that it just you guys have taken over and no one's really kicked you out kind of thing okay uh so before i leave i would probably um say you know i will you know when you leave let me know and i'll you know i'll send you off uh, see you at the ship but um pointing around to the house it's like well you know i mean if you're not going to use this place i can take it off your hands for you you know I'll, I'll pay you a pretty penny for it lou you know i haven't been paying anyone for this house right well why not and so I'll give her like 20 gold and just be like, this well, should set you up for a good little bit in Boiler Bay. I would say so. This, he, he, he was truthful about that. The, the, the gold is real, huh? Wow. It is. Um, what I'm doing for the gold? <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Well, yeah, this... Okay, okay, well... Yeah, feel... I mean, I know danger and all that, but... I wouldn't mind... Just sitting and talking with you... Before I go, if, 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 if it comes, but... I understand. There should be time. Um, I have to get away from people sometimes so i'll be back okay be safe son i love Never you August. i love you too we'll, we'll speak again before you go okay um th what time of day is it right now i guess we'll say point? that took like a solid like you hung out there for two hours so it's now like getting close to like early dinner time it's not like it's not dark no it's not dark or yeah okay um i will go talk to what's his name my friend that took over my job j j Jaren. 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 i think mm -hmm. Jaren and carol yeah yeah hill mm -hmm. hill I'll head over, head over to the Spartan Tavern since it shouldn't be very busy right now. 
Yeah. I think. Uh, you head over to the tavern, and sure enough, uh, Jaron is sitting outside at his usual post. You see him, like, he's not really paying attention to you. You kind of get up close to him before he realizes that you are approaching him. Oh, whoa, uh, hey, Lou, Lupin. I don't remember if he called you Lou. I don't remember all the people that called you Lou, but I don't think he was. Lupin, uh, what are you doing here? Um, look into rest up a little bit. Uh, I know that this can get kind of a hop in place once it gets come nighttime, so I thought I might stake out a place kind of early. Uh, just hanging out for a little bit. Go, go, you know you're always welcome here. Go on in. Um, have you seen uh, Tristy or Saba, I guess, come back from whatever happened this morning? I, I don't know what happened. What 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 was the, that? Oh, yeah. If, if something happened a couple days ago. I don't know. I've only heard some stuff on the streets that, you know, uh, people are excited and hopeful. It's, it seems to be around you guys. Hmm. You said but you'd you be doing good. But you haven't seen them, like, come by or come back yet? Or they're still out? Yeah, honestly, I haven't seen Tristy here in a couple days. Yeah. Saba comes in every night, you know that. But Tristy right. hasn't hasn't worked. Yeah, I'm sure she's busy, you know. Yeah, I'm just going to go in and, you know, get a drink, grab a table, and kind of chill for a little bit if you don't mind so mm -hmm. um you go inside uh, of course the lighting is very different here the can all of like the lanterns and stuff are on full blast it, there's, there's definitely more lighting inside right now uh there's like uh the windows are open a jar a bit to bring in some fresh air and like kind of keep everything flowing and smelling good there's you know there's some citrus scent of some like citrus water used to clean up the place overnight before it's gotten dirty again tonight uh random assortment of people mostly um mostly day workers uh businessmen um who knows some traveling merchants there are definitely some carts out front of people stopping by before either hitting the town or have stopped in just now coming in um jillian is there uh she recognizes you as you come in and acknowledges your presence um you don't see Tristy. You just see some of the other typical workers there. Uh, you find. Do I see that um, the one girl that was at the race, but like uh -huh. was awkwardly in a corner? Felista. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, she is not in there right now. Wow. What did you? What would you like to do? Um. I mean, I'm assuming someone's at the bar tending it. Yes. I will go. Who? Yeah, sure. Do I have multiple servers there? Of course not. Uh, but you know this one. This is Demi Tanner. Okay. Female. Yeah. yeah you know. Yeah, Demi. she's the night manager. She Jillian she... has been the night manager. Okay. This is I just think... another. Yeah, another. I think I once. I, I think I messed some stuff up, but I think I made Jillian the night manager. She's been the one that you've been talking to most. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, then I'd say hi to Demi and like order an actual drink. What kind of drink? Uh, what would Luca drink? That's a good question. I don't know. He would not drink normally. Give him a shot of something. Something strong. All right. So the alcohol burns. It goes down. You're not really imbibing too much often. No no mention from uh, Demi about coin to be paid or anything. Just, this one seems to be on the house. Um, I asked, is... I mean, I point over to where Saba usually is, like... Do we, do we foresee her coming in probably later tonight? I had some things to talk to her about. 
she smiles and... <laughs> I can't imagine the storm that keeps that girl out of this place at night. Would you mind if I just kind of chill in there while she... Wait till she comes back? I'm a little tired right now, so it might be a little quiet time. It'd be good for me. <laughs> Does Lupin fall asleep at a bar? He might. <laughs> you gonna judge him for that? No. <laughs> No, I've never done it. I don't think. I don't know. I wouldn't know, would I? Yeah, you wouldn't. So. Uh, all right. So you sit down. You take your shots. You take in the scene, and we are gonna jump to someone else. Uh, Shree. Hi. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. Uh, there's going to be some shuffling of screens here for a second, guys. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Freak out! Freak out! Freak out! Freak out! Oh, so she, freak so out. She, yeah. There she is. Hi! Okay, did we that got work? a funk band for my best friend's wedding. We booked a funk band that like specializes in funk and disco, and I am so excited! That's awesome. <laughs> so excited. Oh, nice. All I was right. thinking you were talking about something that already happened, but this is awesome. Yeah. No, we saw them, and then I was like, you should book them for your wedding, and she did. So, oh. so cool. Nice. Is it the Anyways. one from a TV show? Or like from a reality contest show? No, um, no, they're just a local band. We saw them at a bar, and we were dancing to them, and I was like, dude, you should book this band for your wedding, and then she did. So, that was cool. That's fun. Their yeah, name is called The Joint Chiefs. Just so great. The Joint so Chiefs great. of Staff. Yeah. The Joint Chiefs. But like, do you think they're talking about doobies? I think so. Doobies. Doobies. I think, doobies. I think there's a play on uh, Entendre right there. Entendre. The double entendre. Calliope. Do not let me bother you guys. <laughs> Calliope. You have yes. had a bath. Mm-hmm. And where are you going out to next? Well, I get so, music up. Um, so Calliope goes and she, um, you know, she puts her great axe on her back and grabs a, a little satchel with coins in it and another little satchel with coins in it and puts them in her pocket and heads over to Marcus's meats. Uh huh. <laughs> Sorry. She. She orders sauce and pulled pork platter. Um, per recommendation of other people in the crew, she orders the the Brussels sprouts that are now on the menu and very begrudgingly eats them as she devours her meat. And uh, uh, I'm gonna, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna stop you there. Sorry, I was trying to figure out this music, but you don't quite make it there. What music is playing? Apparently none. Calliope would really like to make it there. <laughs> Sorry. Not going to be that easy. Um, so as you walk up to meet by Marcus, um, he recognizes you and gives you a, eh, and then quickly kind of like cuts off his own A and kind of gets... Like the vision of you is like, oh my dear, dear, come, come, come. And like shut, ushers you inside. Mm -hmm. You've been sitting outside most of the time, but like on the inside, there's a long counter and tables and stuff set up. And he brings you to the one of the tables and he sits you down and says, dear, uh, what happened? You look horrible. Yeah, well, yeah, all in a day's work. Sometimes this happens. Don't worry. I'm I'm just here to get a quick replenishing bite to eat before I head over to Felicia's, and hopefully she can help me with the patches of missing fur and whatnot. Ah, uh, Felicia, she's a magician. Yes. Hopefully. D here. Is she really magical? Ah, uh, no. I meant with the hair. I don't think she has magic, but people say she's magical with the with the hair and. Uh, I have something special for you. One second. Give me one second. And um, you see him go and check outside. 
kind of opens the door and peeks outside, looks around. Then he goes and he goes back into the kitchen for a second and you hear some clanging and stuff and he comes back out kind of with this like paper folded up in a certain way and as he opens it up he's got like this mixture of like you uh, you know like barbecue burnt ends are they're like they're really good but like most people don't eat them but you but now it's more common to get these like burnt ends and like a like a big thing and then they're good and he has them all ready they're even like a little warm still and he says Mm -hmm. Here, you take. You take this. Yes, to go. This fill you up and give you back energy and you go to Felicia's and she do her magic. Oh, Marcus, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate you. It's only three silver. All right. So Calliope goes into her coins and she pulls out for silver and gives it to him. Oh, you are most gracious. Thank you very much. Hold on, before you go, hold on. Give me one minute. And he goes to the door again. Mm. He looks out for a moment. He comes back and he goes, okay, okay, you you go now. Thank you. So Calliope uh, kind of just... Uh, taking the, the hint walks over to Felicia it's not like nobody can recognize her with her head <laughs> on. and walks over to uh, Felicia's and comes inside so as like the door as the door opens of course the little bell ding ling ling you hear this oh thank you oh welcome to Fe- oh dear oh come on oh oh dear oh dear and she sits you down like welcomes you over to a chair um, you notice it's, it's kind of dark and she, she has to take a second as she gets you to the chair to, to light a few lights, but it's actually, they, she was, seems to have been sitting in the dark. Uh, you notice Talia is there, uh, sitting at another one of the stations. Um, she kind of acknowledges you and looks back down to what she's doing. She seems to be fidgeting with something in her hand, like some of her tools she's cleaning, like, and, um, she has a scowl on her face. And Felicia says, Oh my lord, what happened to you, girl? Oh, mm, mine is just all in a day's work. But, uh, what happened in here? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't you worry about that. Let's, let's focus on you real quick. What, are you okay? Oh, but real quick, remind me, um, have you healed any? I have you at... Well, I mean, there's a... There's a, there was a short rest. It in definitely there. was a short rest. Would you have used it to regain hit points and use hit dice? Yes. Cool. That's oh. that's all. I want. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty rough though. I could well, use a long rest. Right. But you still were able to with as many hit dice as you have and where you were at, you would have been able to get back to full health or relatively close to full health pretty easily with with your hit dice. Walking around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but still, your fur. This like the healing leaves scars like it leaves these marks of injury and, and heal and the burnt hair is still ever present and you're still a mess mm-hmm, although you smell thanks. nice you smell like herbal you know got the the bath going for eucalyptus you. and yeah. lavender yep. i got a massage oh elena <laughs> <laughs> um you have to tell me what what happened to you What could do all of this damage? Oh, well, you needn't worry about that. It's really part of my job. Please don't, don't even worry. It's just sometimes this stuff comes up in the line of work. All right, will will you let me, will you let me try to make it look better? Please, I... Oh, thank you, dear. Know you can help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Talia, uh, help me out, dear. And, and and she starts like unclasping some of your like leather clasps and stuff. And and um, you don't. It's it's kind of all over. You don't mind? Oh no, I'm I'm usually nude when I'm not working, so this is fine. 
she she keeps it professional and like takes it down from your shoulders and and like doesn't completely undress you at the moment but starts like cutting away certain areas and 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 your armor like kind of like the leather straps and stuff that that, that kind of are thicker parts of your get up um left a little bit of a pattern like the, the the fur under the armor the leather part of the armor didn't get burned and so you've got like these kind of interesting patterns already in your fur but you can see you can feel her like taking parts of it and smoothing it out forming these like long wave swathing patterns of like shorter to longer fur that makes like these te textures just trying to work with it to at least make it look intentional and, and what it really ends up looking like is you've got like these two main stripes that come down from your shoulders over your chest and kind of like it kind of wilds out to a diamond around your chest but then comes back down to a, two lines that go down towards your waist um, and on the back you have more of these curves so on the front it's very linear but on the back it's these curved swaths that kind of alternate one uh, like half sphere over a half sphere down your back um, unfortunately your two afro puff hair one of them is just gone so she asks you as she's like she gets up to your to, to your hair and says oh what do we what, is there anything preference wise you want to do with this dear any one of your I mean, home at, styles at this point should we just shave it all and let it grow back I mean, I could do something with it if you like. I can, you could have a little short thing coming down here. Doesn't look good. It's like a Karen. <laughs> Bob. Um, I mean, um, I, uh, I think we should just, I mean, I don't know what it is. It going to look good? Would it look more normal if I had my hair all shaved the same length? No, uh, <laughs> girl, you're gonna have to excuse me. There's really nothing normal about you. Yeah, that's a, that's a true statement. Um, then, yeah, just, uh, you know what? I trust your judgment. I am your canvas. I'm just here for the hair so you pick and then she sits down and just kind of like closes her eyes and then opens an eye notices Talia and then so are you okay you're asking to Talia yeah uh, she looks at you and with a huff, she kind of gets up uh, and doesn't acknowledge you and says, Alicia, I'm going out. Ding, 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 ding. She walks out the door. Well, <clears throat> I have a feeling that was personal, but I'm not sure for what. Oh, she's just upset. She thinks... Oh, I don't want to bother you. It's even if it's true, it's not it's not your fault. What? Well, we've had some cancellations lately um from our more upper scale clientele. Talia seems to think that it's either because of how I look and how you look or if it's because people knew that you came here before, but I just say to hell with them. If they, if they enjoy what I do for them, then they'll come back no matter what the rumors are on the streets. What are the rumors? Oh, surely dear, I'm sure you've, you've heard them. Please enlighten me. What? The streets are abuzz about you and your friends. That you're starting a riot, starting a revolution, starting turning against the gift, trying to 
Uh, stir up trouble. Uh, and that's what people believe? <laughs> people tend to believe the streets. That's just living in a small town like this, I guess, but most people don't really believe the God so much. Who, else, who are you going to believe around here? Your friends, the ones... The ones that you see every day and... Wow, hell, if those people are willing to give on up the conversations we have, we've had in coming in and getting their hair done, then... She kind of trailed off. Mm. Well, my most sin sincere apologies if me being a customer has impacted your business at all. I honestly never set out to become well known or considered or anything. I just, I took this job to take care of my family and now, I mean, I just, I follow orders and I can't control what I have to do for my job. You think I like having patches of my fur ripped off and holes pierced through my body? And I don't even know. I don't even know what revolution is starting, but. Are you still there? Sorry, it's hard to tell you froze on camera. Did I freeze on camera? <laughs> Hello? Thanks, thanks, Stax. Yes, thank you, guys. <laughs> yes. you there Emotional support. It is not oh my God. Yeah, it is. Uh... Hello? <laughs> it's, we're all here. We've all been here the whole time. <laughs> Look at that face, yeah, though. Yeah, there she goes. There she... <laughs> she was so serious there. Uh, she is. She, I mean, you just dropped a bomb on her. Uh, we're going to give Cherie a moment. Uh, don't forget, exclamation, exclamation point uh, critical gets you critical. entered into our second giveaway of the night, which will be dice, which will be the critical dice giveaway. Uh, Cherie, let me know when you're back. Because I would see back. your back. You I knew it'd be. Well, yeah, it's the view. You know, it's the view. <laughs> oh, okay. But I'll get you right now. Yeah. So you go. Away. I got kicked. I got there kicked go. off. Um. We got you. Why didn't the giveaway pop up? There we go. Oh yeah, why the didn't giveaway. it? Did I? That's weird. Oh, you forgot oh, to say. Give away. Give away. <laughs> give away <laughs> for dice. <laughs> Give it away, give away, give away, give it away, give away now. now. <laughs> give away, give away, All right, give away now. Calliope. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, thank you for being honest with me. Thank you for telling me, but I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to defend myself against this situation. I mean, the only way I know how to defend myself is physically, and Girl. that's not going to work here. Oh, don't, don't worry about what's going on out there on those streets. People will believe anything. Every once yeah. in a while, someone, some traveler will come in here and talk of good fortune or hope or some new era. You know, we've had wandering clerics come through here saying that all shall be saved and soon the sun will shine on Gorspire Keep and people get all happy and hopeful and then Nothing ever happens. And we all go back. We all go back to our jobs. We go back to work and we go back to making the days good. So don't worry, but those people, what they're saying and what they're thinking, don't concern yourself with that. I, from what you've told me, uh, I don't think you're a bad person. And I know I'm not a bad person. And that's not really the issue. Uh, 
rumors or ideas can affect lives. And I'm just hoping that whatever these rumors or ideas are floating around about me and my crew are not something that negatively impact our personal lives. So I guess if you, you know, I, I can't ask you to defend me to people, but I can say thank you very much for allowing me to be a customer still. Well, it's just not in my blood to turn, to turn you away. Would you prefer I not be here? Well, she, she pauses for a second. You can tell like there is an internal war going on quickly in her head of like, but she offered, but that's not polite, but, but she's the one that brought it up. That kind of like inner turmoil. And she, she says, well, I mean, if there's an emergency, if there's a cosmetic emergency, then I want to be able to help you, but perhaps a couple days might have things die down a little bit. Um, and Calliope takes this information in. She battles with it because on the one hand, uh, she really wants her fur looking right. And on the other hand, she doesn't want to uh, put this woman in that situation. So, um, Calliope is going to stand up and you know, put her armor on, bust her you hair noticed, to the side. So you let her, I, we didn't actually talk about it, but you were letting her kind of cut as you were talking, I'm guessing, right? Like yeah, with the top. Yeah, yeah. So what the top turned up being is i'm trying to see how it will say it's your right bun that was still kind of spared and she's mm -hmm. like got this this like shortcut all the way up to where the bun would start and there's like a smooth ridge of curls that then falls away so it's kind of like a ridge that falls away so you have this like little wave of curls that go off to one side still very much like in a concentrated puff but now it has a little less symmetry to it, so it doesn't look like maybe there was one missing. It's more mm -hmm. like complete as a look just on its own. Okay, cool. Um, so with that being what it is, Calliope's gonna stand up, get herself ready, um, pay her, and how much, give her how a much little... are you gonna pay her? How much is the service? Uh did you pay last time? I, th I bet you tipped last time pretty good, but um, uh -huh. she just how about a gold coin? That's very generous. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, with apologies, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for your help, and uh, you won't see me again in here at least for a little while. <laughs> She's like, she, you can tell like the inner turmoil is back. Looking at this gold coin now in her hand, she's like, but. No, really, though, if there's anything. If... Thank you. And Calliope uh, takes her leave. The gods bless you, dear. That's not her accent, but that's what she said. <laughs> and uh, may they bless you as well. And, like, you notice as you leave, Talia was just, like, kind of across the street, kind of sitting outside of another one of the storefronts. Um, and as, as, as you make your way, do you want to interact with her at all or? No. Okay. As you walk away, uh, you maybe notice Calliope. She... Oh, a Calliope will look at her and continue on. Not like a threatening or menacing look at all, but just kind of like a, I see you and I have nothing to say about it. Mm -hmm. Um, as you're walking away, Talia is making her way back to the shop. All right, before, because it's nine o'clock Pacific, starting a new little thing would definitely put us past time. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and end it here for tonight. Um, we will continue with these tomorrow night. Er, tomorrow night, wow. 
uh, next week. So, and if I remember right, schedule wise, I believe next week is a go, but it might be the next week after that that's like not good for anyone. I think that's like spring break. Is that spring break week? There's a there's a week in April that I know that some people have. Uh, the mm, I thought it was early 12th? April. I thought it was early April. Anyways, we'll figure it out. Thank you all for stopping in tonight. Uh, this was a lot of fun, as as Chelsea said. Another way for me to really drop some more. Hey, sleepless nights. Thank you for the raid. Of course, how it always is at this time. <laughs> we are just wrapping up our session for the evening. But thank you so much for thinking of us and bringing your people in. We do have a giveaway. You can still get in on this giveaway. How about that? How about that? Yeah, um, giveaway. So, uh, Make sure you put in exclamation mark critical, not exclamation yeah, mark giveaway. Exclamation critical to enter our getaway. Getaway. Give it away. Give it away. Get away. Get away. Get away now. I ain't get got away, nothing. Get away now. I'm going to try to shout out because that's something I should be able to do, right? Sleepless nights. Um, we will be back next Wednesday night. Same bat time. Same bat place. Uh, any any final thoughts before we go while we give time people time to join this last giveaway? No, I just wanted to be next Wednesday. Oh, pretty. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad feeling. It's just intense excitement and enthusiasm and i don't want the night to end that's all yep well that's good that means that that it was a good night it was a good night yeah that was fun for some of us hey <laughs> hey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll i'll keep i'll wait until next wednesday to respond to that <laughs> Cliffhanger. All right, last chance, last chance, exclamation critical for the giveaway. Let's give, show me what you've got. And the reveal is... Existential nerd. Hey! Thanks again for being a follower. Uh, find me on Discord. Ooh. I believe we're already connected maybe in some way. Maybe not, maybe so. Um, everyone else for the raid, thanks. Nothing. You said you're connected in some way, some way. and I said hey, hey. through an existential theme. It's okay. Gotcha. We are all connected. Gotcha. We are all connected in the ether, man. We're out there in the ether, you know. All right, we're gonna find someone for you to raid. No, I'm gonna do it. You don't have to do anything. I'm gonna find someone mm -hmm. to raid so you get mm -hmm. more D&D &D, uh, for the night. Come back next Wednesday uh, or Monday on Fable Forty Two for Crypt Creatures. Uh, no, I think they're actually off next week. I believe they said their next show is in April. Otherwise, have a good evening, guys. Have a good weekend, and we'll Bye. see you next week. Bye-bye.